We recently covered the enigmatic ancient civilization that could once be found among the tops of the mountains within northern Peru. Known as the Chachapoyas, or Cloud People, they were a race of possible ancient giants that are said to have been responsible for some of the most precariously positioned and most amazingly constructed ancient builds to be found anywhere on Earth, let alone Peru. And the most astonishing of these has to be the ancient site known as Kulap. Kulap is a little academically shared, thus little known ancient Peruvian site, located within the Peruvian mountains near the towns of Maria and Tingo, in the southern part of the region of Amazonas. According to particularly funded parties, it was built by the Chachapoyas culture a mere 1400 years ago on a ridge overlooking the Utcubamba Valley. However, once one has an opportunity to visually explore this untouched, once lost ruin, the unexplainable extent of the groundwork that went into creating the site becomes apparent. What first appears to be long brick-walled fortifications are soon realized to actually be enormous, seemingly unimaginably huge groundworks built by brick creating multi-meter reinforced walls, backfilled and leveled with earth, creating a ruin which is now what can only be seen as man-made geology. Groundworks the size of no other anywhere on earth, created apparently quite recently within history without any real record of the astonishing event, or more importantly, cataloging of the methods used found anywhere among the sites. The city has three entrances, two to the east and the other one to the west. The main entrance has a trapezoid shape, having once also having a corbel arch. This entrance was siege-proof due to its cunning shape. It becomes narrower and narrower until it allows the passage of only one person at a time. Astonishing architecture, built with precision into enormous constructions. There are over 550 structures within the fort nearly all of which having once been circular. On the southwestern part of the settlement, there is a 5.5 meters high structure known as El Tentiro, or Templo Mayor, Spanish for main temple. Ceremonial archaeological remains have been found at this location, and it is hypothesized that the building may have been used as a solar observatory. Kulap was accidentally rediscovered in 1843, by Juan Crisostomo Nieto, a judge from the city of Chachapoyas. In 1870, Antonio Reamonde made the first known survey of the site. Ever since, details regarding the site have slowly been revealed. Astonishing ruins. A place like many others around the globe, which also display seemingly impossible feats of engineering accompanied by complete lack of any recording or explanation for said tasks, undoubtedly predates its academic dating. The question is, who could have built such astonishing architecture atop the largest groundworks anywhere on Earth? How did they complete such a mammoth task at such a high altitude? Perhaps one day we will find out. We recently discussed a curious find discovered within the tundras of Antarctica. An enigmatic anomaly seemingly sliding to a halt on the ice caps of the South Pole. We noticed the inaccessibility of the landmass, now permanently encased in over two miles of ice, capable of challenging the most experienced of venturer. It is a place little explored, yet regardless of this inhospitality, if it could be proven to possess any trace or series of ancient ruins, then it would prove beyond doubt that our continued posit that there exists a paradigm within historic academia and that there is indeed a huge chapter of our history now lost, the knowledge of our origins and these said paradigms would be proven as incorrect. For if there exists a now lost ancient civilization frozen and preserved beneath these ice caps, not only would their age be enormous, but their ruins a true testament to their capabilities. There are many ancient ruins here on our Earth, which we believe are undoubtedly older than we are now told. The Great Pyramids, the gigantic megaliths found at Baalbek in Jordan, 
Yangshan Quarry in China. All these ruins, and many more, could be far older than we are currently being taught, and their erosion-resistant characteristics will indeed ensure their existence far into the future. Many internet sleuths trawl pictures of not only Antarctica, but the reels of photos sent back by the Mars rovers, searching for ancient signs of life. And although many of the claimed ruins in Antarctica remain sketchy and little photographed, the next item of interest we find incredibly curious, and one of the driving reasons for this is due to these possible ruin similarities to one of the most impenetrable of them all, the fortress of Sacsayhuaman. However, what makes this image of a possible outer wall truly special is its possible scale. If indeed factually true, and this is indeed the remnants of an ancient fortress outer barrier, it would be over two miles in length. With the continent of Antarctica being a frozen tundra for over 20 million years, if these claimed ruins turned out to indeed be of artificial origins, it would undoubtedly force the age of man back by many millions of years. We hope more is done to explore the true nature of this curious feature. Even if it is nothing but a landmass, it is unquestionably highly compelling. Although many academic bodies and the individuals funded by said institutions are only allowed to attribute ancient ruins to known heavily researched past civilizations, there exist many features within these sites found all over the world which tell a very different story. Not only are they indicative of an ancient civilization far more capable than our well-studied more recent ancestors, but many of them share features within their builds, with many other sites who are separately claimed by the as-mentioned institutions as the work of completely different past civilizations, who we feel are far more likely, based on said evidence, to have been mere re-inhabitants of these sites, which allowed these civilizations to flourish, adopting said features into their own cultures and often claiming said works as their own to outside groups. Not only do the similarities show an undeniable connection with sites currently argued as completely isolated ancient works of architecture, but many of the most astonishing features of said sites are not only ignored, but often overlooked by the world as a result which we also feel is strong evidence of not only a deliberate attempt to ignore the facts in favor of fallacy, but clear proof of a conspiracy which is largely funded in an effort to keep these particular proverbial smoking guns hidden and under wraps, often avoiding further study as a result, this clearly due to the reality they contain regarding facts about the history of man which academia is not only responsible for hiding in favor of funding, but are responsible for hiding the true history of man from man himself, in an effort to merely appear all-knowing in the face of things they currently have no explanation for. And the so-called Inca Road is indeed one of these said ancient anomalies, which is of an astonishing size. It is so big, in fact, it even dwarfs the Great Wall of China an ancient relic so big it can be seen from space. One might ask, how can I not have been informed of such an ancient relic? But once one realizes the current academically baffling accomplishment this so-called Inca masterpiece must have once been, the conspiracy to keep such a site largely unknown will become clear. It is a road system that not only links nearly every unexplained ancient ruin currently known to exist within Peru, connecting Puma Punca, Sacsayhuaman, Machu Picchu, Olante Tambo, along with many others. It in fact covers an incredible 25,000 miles, topping the Chinese wall by nearly 7,000 miles, going all the way through Peru, Chile, and spreading out far beyond, with bridges, tunnels seemingly carved straight through cliff faces and even following sheer drops, once cut horizontally into near-vertical rock faces, with plunging sides dropping at times thousands of meters to valleys below. 
We strongly believe that although the road has clearly been utilized by an unimaginably large number of travelers and has been severely eroded away nearly everywhere, the method of construction now hidden by erosion, that this surface, just like that of the roads of Pompeii, were actually formed using a now lost stone technique, now largely known as that of polygonal masonry. Not only a lost, now unexplained technique of stone building, indicative of a lost civilization and technologies, but the sheer size of the road and the features accomplished along its incredible length still provides countless unexplained features, which cannot be explained as Inca. Yet not only is it and its features academically ignored, but we feel the proposition of it being an Inca relic just like all the ancient sites we have already covered in which it connects, are far too advanced to be claimed as Incan. How can one claim that such a relic was built by our more recent ancient ancestors, when not only does this site link much of ancient Peru and is largely ignored, but not only the road but all said sites currently hold feats of ancient engineering which cannot be explained? It is clearly a feature that is indicative of a far more advanced, far more ancient civilization, which once constructed this road and the sites found along it, merely re-inhabited by our now well-studied far more recent ancient ancestors. It is a place we find highly compelling. The Baalbek Trilithon, a group of three horizontally lying stones which form part of the podium of the Roman Jupiter Temple of Baalbek, Lebanon. Numerous archaeological expeditions have gone to the site, starting in the 19th century, primarily German and French groups, and research continued into the 20th century. Each of these stones is 70 feet long, 14 feet high, and 10 feet thick, weighing around 800 tons each. And conveniently, each of these modern academic studies concluded the same thing, completely absent of any explanation as to their placement. The entire foundation of this ancient structure is unexplainable, with a number of stones weighing over 350 tons, thus indicative of lost knowledge, not modern architecture. It should seem obvious that to declare otherwise would be foolish, yet this is what's witnessed all over the earth every day. And we are yet to mention the world-famous, yet equally perplexing Stone of the Pregnant Woman, also at Baalbek, and weighing in at an astonishing 1,000 tons. As Yuri Mruzik put it, quote, In 27 BC, the Roman Emperor Augustus supposedly took the unfathomable decision to build in the middle of nowhere the grandest and mightiest temple of antiquity, having no obvious reasons for selecting Baalbek as the temple's building site. The much greater erosion of the big Baalbek blocks qualifies as material proof of their much greater age, end quote. It seems that as we suspected, the evidence is mounting to support the far more logical claim that an advanced lost civilization's heritage has been stolen by different, more modern civilization all over the world. A great civilization did once flourish here on Earth, one which has been actively suppressed, stolen from, exploited, and hidden for far too long. Thanks for watching, guys, and until next time, take care. Along with the many other currently unexplained feats of engineering present within the ancient ruins of Baalbek's temples is undoubtedly the variety of ancient stones that were somehow incorporated into the structures. Although modern academia and indeed its supporters, who are all seemingly suffering with selective research syndrome, claim that Baalbek is a Roman ruin, we feel, as mentioned, the sheer size of the ancient megaliths that were installed masterfully into its construction are obviously far too large for our Roman ancestors to have transported from distant quarries and who have installed into the structure. We are more than open to this proposition that they were indeed installed and built by Romans if we can be provided with one single logical explanation as to how this was done. But, as of yet, this remains elusive, absent any academic explanation as to the site. As mentioned, the astonishing array of ancient stones is also an area that is rarely covered by individuals attempting to convey an air of all-knowing to the masses, 
as these features are, just like the enormous megaliths present at the site, currently unexplainable. Specifically, it's the pink granite columns. The reason for our focus on these particular stones is the fact that this pink granite is only available at one known ancient quarry, that being the famous quarry of Aswan, located within modern-day Egypt, an astonishing 1,500 kilometers away. Some of these stones weighing in at more than 10 metric tons, this achievement, we feel, is clear indication of the fact that the builders of these ancient sites were far more capable than that of our more recent Roman ancestors. For example, as previously covered on our channel, Henri Layard brought two Lamassu weighing in at a similar size around 10 tons to London. This task took over 18 months of arduous suffering for hundreds of our modern ancestors, placed a mere century ago to complete. It included several near disasters and included loading them onto wheeled carts, complex systems of modern pulleys and levers operated by dozens of men, the utilization of over 300 men in total, a barge, and a custom-built ramp to haul them up the steps and into the museum. How these same curators, historians, and academics alike can continue to claim that our Roman ancestors completed such tasks, along with the placement of such enormous stone megaliths, is to us absurd. Was the unfinished obelisk found within Aswan the work of the same civilization? We feel that these pink granite columns could in all possibility be a link that connects these two ancient sites, and in particular, the Great Pyramids. Was Baalbek, with its enormous granite megaliths, built by the same people as the Great Pyramids? Is the giant megalithic exoskeleton of the Great Pyramids, which we have already exposed, built with the same techniques as Baalbek? We find the evidence to suggest such highly compelling.